Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti. And I'm here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions, and I'm not here to slander anyone. So let's get started. Today's episode, I want to discuss with you the hearing today. Give you all the takeaways, and of course, give you my take on things that were said and things that were not said. Now, first of all, I guess the thing we need to point out is the fact that Bill Thompson was absolutely sitting in the courtroom. And just like I said, Bill Thompson's not going to leave this case because Bill Thompson is the case. He has all the information on the keys to the case, which are the informants. Just like I've said all along. Now, I'm willing to bet that there are some out there that are going to say, hey, look, Pavarotti got it wrong because Bill Thompson is still on the case. And that's because they looked at this thumbnail, but they didn't actually watch my video. Y'all did. So, you know, in that video, I told you Bill Thompson wouldn't be taken off the case and he wasn't. So the first thing I want to discuss is demeanor. The demeanor of the participants in this court was very interesting. And I'll start with Mr. Koberger. Now, Mr. Koberger, he looked a little bit different in the way, in his posture, in his facial expression. Uh, he, just, he, just, he just looked a little different. He was very stone-like, sitting up with almost a, I would describe as a, as a, as a look on his face of uh, not good, a look of despair. I mean, it's the only way I can describe it. And his posture, just everything about it uh, showed tense. And I mean, I'm sure that's a frightening situation to be in, going in front of that new judge for the first time. And, and, um, I don't know. He just he just looked tense. Um, it was a little bit strange. And and then Ann Taylor, she was very quiet, soft spoken, and you can tell that she had. I wouldn't say fear of this new judge, but she was almost uh, well aware that she should be afraid. Is the best way I can put her demeanor. And then there is Bill Thompson. Now, Bill Thompson, I will say unequivocally beyond the shadow of a doubt, that dude sat there and he was scared. He was in fear. He was nervous. I mean, he was very soft-spoken. Yes, sir, Judge. And you could just tell by his demeanor, he was, um, he's out of his element. Um, he's in, uh, he's treading waters I don't think he's ever treaded before. And and he, you know he's feeling it. He was he was scared. You can just tell by their demeanor. They, they, everybody in that courtroom looked nervous, except for the judge. The judge didn't look nervous at all. He looked like he wanted to establish himself as a tough judge. He he maybe even wanted to establish himself as a a tougher judge than he is. I mean, it almost looked like he was acting a little bit overly tough. Um, but that was my take on everybody's demeanor. So the demeanor I thought was very interesting. Um, now, as far as the substance goes, let's see here. I took some notes for y'all. Make sure I don't miss anything so y'all don't have to watch that thing. Um, number one, Koberger was allowed to wear a suit in this trial. And I didn't do a video on the defense's request for him to wear street clothes. And by street clothes, they mean a suit. Um, I just didn't, I don't think that merited a, you know, a video. So when they did file a motion for him to be able to wear street clothes, apparently the judge has not granted that motion. He did, um, order a special circumstance to allow him to wear street clothes to this court hearing, which was his suit. And then he explained that before the next hearing that he would meet with uh, defense and the prosecutor before the hearing 
and hear the arguments on, on the clothes situation. And he would do that in, um, in a hearing that uh, was closed to the public and closed to Mr. Koberger. He didn't want Mr. Koberger in that hearing because he would have bailiff and um, sheriff, uh, transfer personnel, everybody in there to discuss safety procedures. So looks like the judge was protecting against Koberger. You know, when they say safety procedures, they're, they're not necessarily talking about the procedures to protect Koberger. They're talking about safety procedures and in respect to him, you know, maybe garnishing some type of um, something that would cause somebody to not be safe when he's changing clothes is the way that I took it. Uh, but they'll be having a hearing before the next hearing on whether or not Koberger is going to be allowed to wear a suit. So I thought that was interesting. Um, he's also going to continue the non-dissemination order. Okay, when I say he said he's going to continue it, now he did throw in a caveat of if I decide to not continue it in the future, then you know that would be when he made that decision. But until he made that decision, not only was the non-dissemination order in place, he put extra emphasis on nobody with access to any of the information in this case that is not supposed to be in the public view. Nobody better disclose, leak any of it, or there would be serious consequences. And it sounded like he meant it. So not only is the non-dissemination order still in place, he's got extra emphasis on nobody break it, which is, you know, kind of frustrating. Um, he wants to move the trial. Uh, he's gonna he's going to uh, not move the trial out of out of um, Ada, but move the trial date. He wanted to move the trial date up to May instead of June due to the fact that he didn't want to take away a juror's entire summer, which I can appreciate that. Um, but he said his other option, if May wasn't feasible, would have been pushing it back until September. Either way, you can see that this judge is ready to get this trial underway. It's not going to be one of those, okay, I'm going to let you push things off another year. Not going to happen. That thing's going to happen this next year. And one thing that was kind of slick on Ann Taylor's part is when he was presenting the options for September and May, Ann Taylor brought up the fact that one of the one of the experts, one of her mitigation experts, which mitigation means if he's found guilty, that's the sentencing phase of mitigating the death penalty. But one of her mitigation experts apparently has passed away during the process of investigating for the mitigation. So she's got a new expert and uh, she was trying to get an extension on her expert um, witness declaration deadline. And funny enough, her, her original deadline, the judge brought it up, was in March of next year. And he said, that's a long time away. And she said, well, if I could just have until the end of April. Now, anybody with a, you know, half a brain can tell that since the judge offered May and September as potential court dates by her asking for an extension of that expert to the end of April, she knew if that extension was granted, they couldn't set the trial date for May. So it was very slick on her part because as soon as she offered that deadline, the judge looked at Bill Thompson and said, well, can it's just mitigation expert. I mean, can you handle that end of April? And he's like, no, I can't prepare, you know, um, I can't prepare myself against that uh, expert in a, in a matter of days or weeks. Um, it would be impossible. So, so the two, I guess, remedy the situation. Uh, the judge and Ann Taylor are going to have an ex parte hearing. That means just the judge and Ann Taylor. Bill Thompson can't be in there. Nobody else can because it's a private conversation. They're going to be discussing things the defense is going to use in the case and uh, the prosecution doesn't get to know at this time. So after that hearing, I imagine this judge is gonna make a decision. We should know very soon if this trial is gonna go down in May or if it's gonna go down in September, but it's gonna be one or the other. 
And he had Bill Thompson stay around till after that ex parte hearing so he could let him know, you know, which day it would be. So he's going to make that decision today. Whether we find out today or not, you know, that's, that's I doubt we will, but we'll find out real soon. Um, the other thing is, you can tell by the interactions of this judge and Bill Thompson, they have absolutely zero relationship. There is nothing going on behind the scenes with this judge and Bill Thompson. Bill Thompson scared to death of this judge. So all that chatter out there about how this judge has got ties to, um, you know, the university and, and um, uh, Mortensen, the uncle and, and all that. I mean, that's, that's just, that's a bunch of crap. Now they, they have no ties. Bill Thompson scared of this judge. You can tell they have no relationship. This will be a straight up trial. Um, the other thing, let's see, I have trouble reading my notes here. Let me see here. Um, oh yeah, they were given 398. The defense was finally given 398 additional gigs of discovery from the prosecution. Now, that 398 gigs apparently came from the FBI. So chances are now the defense has the full cast report and all of that other discovery that, um, you know, that they were supposed to have. I'm assuming in, in that discovery, Ann Taylor must have received even the videos from those businesses because when the judge asked if the discovery deadline has been met, did the, did the prosecution turn over all the discovery? The defense said, well, I haven't been able to look at all of it yet, but I think they did. So and there was nothing definite about that. And I'll show you a clip of that here in just a second. Um, in fact, here, let me, let me go ahead and show you that clip. And then I want to discuss one other thing that happened. And that's where Pavarotti is about to get fired up. But take a look at this clip. Uh, I think the state's deadline for discovery has... Uh past as the state complied with its discovery obligations including those outlined in judge judges uh, last order and other orders you have your honor and in fact uh, Ms. Jennings prepared a lengthy summary of all the discovery that was filed with the Latah County Court when our discovery deadline hit um, it is lengthy but there's a lot of discovery sure um, we recognize that much of the you say 300 gigabytes? 398 since August 13th. How much of that is new information? Uh, Ms. Jennings could speak to that. Okay. Ms. Jennings, can you speak to that? Um, Your Honor, the defense was given, and I'm not sure if this is what they're referencing, but they were given um, a copy of the OneDrive um, from the FBI. Um, most of that was cumulative um, discovery that they had already received in another fashion. I'm sure there were portions of it that was new information. Okay. Um, I, I don't. I've not calculated how much of that was new. Um, so I can only rely on Ms. Taylor's, um, what she's represented to the court on that. Well, I don't think she knows because it doesn't sound like she's looked at it yet. Not all of it, Judge. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I will uh, talk when we're finished here with Ms. Taylor um, uh, without uh, the state present in a closed hearing. Um, what else do we need to talk about today or do you want to talk about today? Uh, nothing comes to mind right now, Judge. I know that there will be plenty of opportunity for other discussions. Um, as far as your meeting with defense ex parte, do you want the state for any reason to stay around or would you like us to get on the road back to Moscow? Are you on, are you uh, uh, flying or driving? Driving. Okay. Well, why don't you hang around just in case we need to, uh, if, the, if I'm able to make a decision based on that, I can inform you what that is at least. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So the only other thing I feel like was of was of issue is in the end the judge asked both of them 
Are there any other outstanding motions or issues before we move into the next hearing phase, which will be over the death penalty? And the defense said no. So when she said no, I thought, okay, well, then that means that she must have the full cast report from the prosecution. So now she can disclose the complete alibi. And we can finally hear what Koberger has to say where he was the night of the atrocity. This looks good. But then the prosecution said, nope, no other motions or issues outstanding for us, judge. And I went, wait a minute. What are you talking about? You've been, you've been screaming to high heaven that you wanted the defense to produce an alibi. And we're all in suspense because you filed a response asking the judge to rule that the defense couldn't present any alibi after the last one. And the defense followed suit with, as soon as we get the discovery of the cash report from the FBI, then we'll produce the alibi and the judge never made a ruling. So how is it nothing, Bill Thompson? What is going on? What do you mean nothing? Nothing outstanding. No, nothing. No issues. That's an issue. What's the ruling? Or where's the alibi? Either, either there needs to be a ruling or there needs to be an alibi or they need to disclose something because this is a bunch of BS at this point. It makes me think that neither the defense nor the prosecution wants that alibi out into the open in its full, in its fullness, with everything in it. Wonder why that is. Is it because if the defense produces the entire alibi statement, then you're going to know that he wasn't out driving alone the entire night. He was out driving alone until he picked up Copaca. Is that why y'all don't want the alibi statement out there? I know the, the defense doesn't want to put that out there at this point because it would, it would hamper the, the uh, defense's, um, it would hamper the defense. It, it would create bias against the defense. And I understand that. But I know the prosecution doesn't want it out because then their narrative of the one-off incel Ted Bundy guy goes out the window because once you introduce a second perp, then everything changes. If two people commit a crime like that, then there has to be a reason. And you can't sell it away with incel Bundy crap. So is that why y'all aren't pushing for the full alibi statement to come out, both sides? I bet you're happy that non-dissemination order was not only staying in place, but it was going to be enforced even more stringently. See, that's the kind of crap I'm talking about in this case. Frustrating. But anyways, that's where we're at. That was the little hearing today. And uh, it seems like other than, other than uh, hearings that we really don't need to hear, like security hearings and things like that going forward, maybe we'll get to watch some real stuff. But the judge did act as if he's going to be making decisions much quicker. And uh, he said that he's going to be a lot faster than Judge John Judge was in responding to motions and having uh, hearings on things and scheduling things quickly. And you can tell he wants to get the show on the road and get this trial going and get it out of his hair, but even though he doesn't have any. But that's, uh, that's the take. And please like and subscribe to the channel. Post your comments, your thoughts, your criticisms. I'm going to try to put another one out this evening on... On that second perp in this case. Now, I, I did actually complete the, um, the summation of my, part, my three part series, and I brought everything together in the summation. A lot of people seem like they may have been a little confused about they were different theories, and no, they're not different theories, they're, they're one theory. They're just three parts to one head. And in the final part to that series, I made it all come together. You don't want to miss that. But it's I got it out to the members, and I'm, I'm letting them watch it now. I'll probably put it out tomorrow night. Um, 
that's that's my plan at this point anyways but um until next time Pavarotti is out